Well, you know what? Uh, I'm going to give you guys a chance to make some noise as well. So just take a moment, turn to a neighbor, and tell something, a piece of good news or something that you've been really excited about today. No, seriously, just take a moment. Yeah. All right, well, either some of you actually shared or you just sat there talking about how much you hate it when you have to do these things. But I'm going to assume that you actually did share a piece of good news or something you were excited about. And so how hard was that really to do? You know, not that hard, because there's something about good news, something about things that excite us that we want to share with others. Even if it's meaning we have to turn to a stranger to do it, maybe it's a little more uncomfortable, but still, that good news just wants to come out of us, wants to be shared. I got an example from this week. Uh, my son, Jonah, he lost his first tooth. All right, you can see the big gaping hole right there in his mouth. And uh, that happened this week here at Peace Care during lunch. He just pulls it out and shows his teacher, look, what fell out of my mouth, which was a shock to everyone. But uh, when I picked him up at the end of the day, he could not wait to tell me. He couldn't wait to show me the tooth that they put in a bag. And he's super excited at this point because he had also seen his sister. And his sister starts telling him about all the joys of the tooth fairy. And the whole list of things that the Tooth Fairy is going to bring him that night. So he is really excited to see me. But not just me, not just to tell me as we're leaving every single person who comes down the hall, he has to tell them about this good news and show them the hole that's in his mouth. He was real excited. It was good news. It could not be contained. And... Good news does that. And sometimes that good news for us even runs so much deeper. It's almost like our heart can skip beats. Tears can develop in our eyes ready to come out when, we, when that medical diagnosis comes back and it's the best news that we were hoping for, a birth of a child or a grandchild. There are so many memories that when we look back can still elicit those emotions, the joy that was there. It's hard to contain it. As we turn to the 100th Psalm for today, I think that uh, that's part of, of what gets caught up in this psalm, is this joyful noise, this joy that is in us that needs to be shared. And so the psalm writer tells us, make a joyful noise to the Lord, sing it out, give praise and thanksgiving. And the psalmist writes it not because we need to be told to tell others of good news, that some come so natural to us, but part of what the psalmist is writing is a reminder of when we, when we have these, these blessings in our life to remember the source of where they come from, to give thanks to God who has blessed us and made all of these things possible. That sometimes we need to be reminded of all of this. After all, when I was walking down that hallway with my son, not once, not once did he turn to someone and say, you know, blessed be the name of the Lord. Today is such a great day. God has created the whole world. God has set the stars and the sun in their courses. God has caused me to grow and in his infinite wisdom thought that little teeth would fall out so big teeth can grow in. Praise be to God. That's very disappointed. Not once did he say that. He's very excited about the tooth falling out, but... Now, maybe if I coached him into saying those things, he might come around and see, oh, yeah, all these things God has made me and these things happen. This is a sign that I'm growing. This is a great blessing. This is God's work, this tooth coming out. And really, I mean, that's partly why we try to teach the faith to our children, that these little things that are in their lives get to be seen as blessings that come from God. And the psalmist does the same thing, really, and, and how the psalm comes out. The psalmist tells us, make a joyful noise to the Lord. Know that the Lord is God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. There's all these words of commandment in here reminding us 
that when we give thanks for the blessings in our life, we first give thanks to God, who is its source. But what I love about this psalm is not just the reminders that it gives us to bless the name of the Lord, not just the reminders to remember when we so oftentimes forget in good times the source of all goodness, but what comes in verse 5 when it gives us what God is doing. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, his faithfulness to all generations. It's a reminder that all of the ways that God is working in our world, working in our lives, that God is the one who has made promises to us in our baptism and keeps those promises, that God has made promises to his people since the beginning that we hear about and read about in Scripture, and over and over again we see how God has fulfilled and been faithful to God's people from generation to generation, and it is that story that we continue to share with each other. This past week, one of my friends on Facebook had uh, posted this quote from Father Richard Rohr. Prayer, and I thought it was just kind of a, a fit in well with our scripture reading for today. Prayer is connecting with God. It is not an attempt to change God's mind about us or about events. Such arrogance is what unbelievers make fun of, and often rightly so. Prayer is primarily about changing our own minds so that things like infinity, mystery, and forgiveness can resound within us. Now, truth, when we pray, when we are told, Jesus tells us to pray to God as our Father, to ask of those things that are on our hearts. Luther in the Catechism tells us to ask those things that we care most deeply about. And so we do bring our our deepest needs and concerns to God in prayer. I think at the heart of prayer is this reminder of God's faithfulness. At the heart of prayer is the invitation to be looking at the world, to be looking at where God is working, where God is showing his blessing, his care, his mercy, his presence with us. Prayer is not always about asking, but recognizing what God is doing. And that we see God's steadfast love around us. This last week we had vacation Bible school here at Peace. This was a happening place. It was full of lots of noise, which is just going to happen when you get you know, nearly 500 kids together. And uh, except in the afternoons, you know, we had a little bit of break for the volunteers to nap. Then we keep it a quiet place. But in the morning, in the evening, there was joyful noise. There was singing. There was dancing. There was shouts as, as kids are playing the games. There is no question that a joyful noise was being made. Kids were having fun and hearing Bible stories and joining together in prayer. It was just a great week to be here at peace. But for me, the part that caught me most about this week came on Thursday evening. The last night, it's the, the, we were getting ready for the preschool program. The kids were kind of lined up over here, the four- and five-year-olds. They were doing their last little bit of practicing before the parents came in to hear all the songs that they had been singing. Although the kids are probably, parents have been hearing these songs at home all week. They're probably giving them headaches at this point but they're going to watch him perform. And up there was one little boy who stood out. And this one boy stood out to me because we had been praying for him in this congregation for about the last seven months. Because about seven months ago, he was diagnosed with leukemia. And I remember visiting him and his family in the hospital right after his diagnosis and through the first few rounds of treatment and all kinds of emotions that come up, all kinds of prayers being lifted up about the uncertainty that's coming for him and for their family and the long journey of, of treatments and wholeness that lie before them. 
and then connecting with him at other points since those hospital visits when he was essentially locked in home and isolation and fear of taking him out. He couldn't go to daycare or preschool or join sports teams because he couldn't be around other kids because kids carry germs, right? And with his sickness, there was no chance that they could put him next to other kids in case he might get what they get or what they carry. And even having his, you know, being around his siblings was already a worry too. And so suddenly to see this kid up here at VBS singing and dancing, up here where other young kids are, this is like a family reunion of germs. And he's doing the motions, and he's smiling, and he's lifting up his joyful noise. And I can feel this little, like, I don't know, wet spot coming in my ear. I don't know what it was. Out of my eye. Not my ear. (laughs) But it seemed like an answer to a prayer, even if momentarily, even if he's going to have tougher days ahead, if there are going to be moments when he's still going to be locked up in his house, that he can't be around other kids. For one week, he got to be here singing praise, hearing about Jesus, about God's promises to him and to all of us that are made in our baptism. And I knew prayers had been answered. I knew of God's faithfulness. And in the moment, I couldn't help but turn to some people and share that story because the good news of what is happening could not be contained. It was a wild and crazy week here. And so many miracles and little blessings were happening. And for me, that was just another one, kind of the icing on the cake of seeing and knowing where God is in our world. And getting to join with that psalmist and lifting up a joyful noise and praise and thanksgiving because of the steadfast love of God that is shown from generation to generation. This joy that cannot be contained in us. This joy that is made known to us through the death and resurrection of Jesus and the giving of himself that we may know God's great love and care for each one of us. This is what is truly worth singing and sharing and lifting up our our praise, our song, and coming together to worship. Amen.